Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. It's something to me on Twitter, The Gaming Drag. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Liar. So y'all, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right back into the trial, shall we? Alarm Chan, you were up, and let's go. Alright. I followed them almost immediately after. I don't appreciate you. No more interruptions from the jury, please. The twins sit down, one of them waving a dismissive wing in Lyle's direction. You may continue, Lyle. I met with Lord Leuven at the ball, and we spent some time together before he decided to leave. After I found Leuven, I escorted him back to my room, as it was the closest to where I had found him, and he had caught a cold. I knew that my quarters had a fireplace that had already been lit. We stayed there for some time, not intending to return to the party. Then what happened? After a while, a servant. A servant came to my quarters, saying that King Raynor had sent him to retrieve Leuven. The king had business that he wished to discuss with Lord Leuven. Leuven left with the servant and I stayed behind, knowing he wouldn't need a guard in Rainer's chambers. He clears his throat and continues. After some time, I went to check on Lord Leuven. There were no guards posted in the entrance to the staircase. I found that a bit odd, so I ran up the stairs. When I reached the top, I found Leuven, lying on the ground while Bjorn stood over them, sword drawn and attacking him. I heard Bjorn to lay down his sword and then found out that Rainer had been killed. Sir Finn had been sent to alert the castle. I didn't think it was Leuven who had done it, not for a second. Even so, I arrested them and locked them in a cell. He steps back and Adrius nods his head. Very good. Describe the scene of the crime, please. Lau steps forward and continues. Well, Rainer's chambers are at the top of the highest tower, with a spiral staircase leading up to it. Entrance usually guarded by two members of the Royal Guard while he's there. After examining the room, we found blood on the curtains and drapes. Other than that, there wasn't too much blood anywhere else. There was also no moisture or snow on the carpet in the window, so it's not likely that it was ever opened. The body was lying on the floor beside the behind the bed. Liz takes a piece of parchment and passes it around to the nobles. Each of them looks at it and, and grimaces. The dagger. The dagger used in the crime was found to the left of the body. There are clear signs of a struggle, separate from the sword marks left on the floor from Bjorn's bastard sword. Rainer had clearly been caught off guard. There were rips in the drapes by the window, indicating that his antlers had torn through them during the struggle. We, found, we even found gold flakes from one of his antlers lining the, lining the, tear, lining the tears. He pauses, taking a deep breath before continuing. He's doing a really good job so far describing the event. He's not lying about anything, but I wouldn't want him to do that. Yet he's still leaving out some truth. Several canine guards, along with myself, picked up scents from the room. Four people had been in the room around the time of the murder. Sir Bjorn, Lord Kadaj, King Raynor, and of course, of course, and Lord Leuven. There's chatter among the crowd, but Adrius raises his hand to silence them. Is that all you have to present? For now. Adrius isn't too happy with this response, but continues anyway. You may join your guards. Lyle goes up, to the, goes up the steps, putting his helmet back on as he takes his place in the center of the guards. He looks down at me for a moment, giving a barely noticeable nod in my direction. Leif? Yes, your majesty. Please give your reports on the body. Of course. Leaf steps forward and holds out a piece of parchment, reading off of it. When the body was examined, two stab wounds were found in the stomach, along with one in the chest. The throat had also been slit across the front. He squints his eyes, holding the parchment closer to his face. His eyes and head were positioned so that he was looking out the window. Clear signs of a struggle were found on the tips of his fingers. I can see Adrius getting a bit uncomfortable in his chair. I can actually, I actually feel kind of bad and avert my eyes. There were, also tears, there were also tear stains on his cheeks, and the body was very clearly fresh. Adrius cuts him off as Leaf becomes lost in his description. Thank you, Leaf. Leaf steps back up to the side of the throne and Liz looks to me. Lord Leuven, you may now present your side of the story. I sit there for a moment, not really knowing how to start. The hall is silent, I can almost hear my own heart beating. Being put on the spot like this is very stressful. I guess I should start with when Lyle and I separated. I clear my throat and begin. Everything happened just as Sir Reed described it. At least, according to his perspective. A servant whose name I'm not, aware, I'm not aware of came to fetch me early into the night. I told Lyle to stay behind and left for the king's chambers. Like, you know, water time. Hm. Delicious water. But he is your guard, is he not? Should he not accompany you everywhere? The servant did not accompany me, saying that I should be able to find my way to his chambers quite easily, insinuating that I would not need a guide. I was only doing what seemed appropriate. He says nothing, waving his hand, allowing me to continue. As I made my way down the hall, I came across Sir Bjorn and Sir Finn, standing guard at the entrance to the staircase. They let me pass, and I made my way up to the room. When I reached the top, there was an area of a large window on the ceiling. Ahead were the doors, and when I entered, that's when I noticed something was off. 
The room was dark, and the curtains and drapes lining the ceiling blocked out a lot of the light. I couldn't see Rainer, so I assumed he wasn't there. That's when I noticed the damage. Broken portraits, large tears to the canopy of the bed. I followed the trail of broken objects and found his body. At first, I didn't know what I was looking at. The entire scene left me shocked. I didn't know what to do, and everything was spinning. What happened next? Well, as most of you know, I had been quite ill. I was having constant headaches daily, not to mention the few days I spent comatose. I assumed my mind couldn't handle the sudden shock, and I began to suffer from similar pains. I tried to reach the door to warn someone and tell them what had happened. In the crowd behind me, I can hear people whispering back and forth. Even the nobles are, t are talking amongst themselves. I think they would want to hear this. That's when Bjorn entered the room. Right on cue, I would say. He started by spouting off a question for Raynor, but he quickly found out something was wrong. Finn was with him at the time, but Bjorn told him to stay at the door. He found me, collapsed on the ground, and immediately rushed to Raynor's body. He assumed that I had killed him and attacked. Of course, not before sending Sir Finn away to alert the castle. That way he could, not, that way he could have me all to himself. If Lyle hadn't arrived in time, he would have killed me on the spot. You didn't mention knocking on the door. Everyone looks up, and a few people in the crowd start whispering. I didn't. So you didn't knock on the door. Neither did Sir Bjorn. People in the crowd begin to murmur. Adrius doesn't look pleased nor convinced, but when is he ever? I assume the rest of your account is similar to Lyle's. Yes. Very good. Sir Finn, please tell us your side of the story, if you will. Finn turns around, taking off his helmet, facing the nobles and Adrius. Bjorn and I were guarding the entrance to King Raynor's chambers that night, as you know. We allowed Lord Leuven to pass a few minutes before our shift change. Bjorn and I went upstairs to let King Raynor know what we were going to be leaving. Well, that we were going to be leaving, when Bjorn found what had, what had happened. I was told to alert the castle, and, so, and I did so. I was able to quickly find the commander of the castle guard and alert them to the murder. Soon, everyone in the castle knew. Is that all? There's one last thing. The reason Bjorn's scent was found in the room was because he would check in on King Raynor every once in a while. As meat-headed as he is, he's dutiful. Each time he returned to our post, and I noticed nothing out of the ordinary. Anything else? Adrius seen, almost seems bored. No, that's it. Finn places his helmet back onto his head and, re and resumes his position among the guards. Unfortunately, that gives Bjorn a nice alibi. Moving on, we will present some unbiased individuals who have had a, who have had character interactions, who've had enough interactions with you to be able to judge your character. Starting with Leif. Leif walks down the steps and stands in front of the throne. So far, everything seems to be going smoothly, but something feels off. Leif, please detail your interactions with Lord Leuven. He clears his throat and begins. My lords and ladies, Lord Leuven has been a good friend. In the time that he has been here, he has shown nothing but kindness and understanding. A bit odd at times, but no more than the rest of the staff in this castle. I have tended to their wounds and helped him with the head pains he experiences frequently. They've been an excellent patient. Over the past few weeks, he seems to have almost blended in with the nobility residing in this castle. He's become closely acquainted with Sir Reed, and they work very well together. Not only that, but as the assigned financial advisor, I'm told that he did his job and did it well. He saved the king a lot of money with that party. He pauses, bowing before Adrius. That is all. Leif steps back, and even though all the things he said were kind, it feels like it wasn't a lot. I guess we haven't gotten to know each other that well outside of him caring for me. Thank you, Leif. Please, stay. I just have a few questions for you. I feel a tightness in my gut as he says this. Yes, your highness. A few days before the solstice, I believe an incident happened. I asked because I was not there, but I'm told that it was a very theatrical incident. Leuven here came storming into a meeting between my father and the war minister. He started spouting off things about what happened ten years ago, things about my mother. The assassins from the canyons also came into question. Am I correct? I want to speak up and tell him what really happened. I have a strong urge to do it, but I think the best thing to do right now is let Leif talk. Oh, yes. Lord Leuven had been suffering from terrible nightmares lately. He merely believed that he had some sort of premonition. I hear a few people chuckle in the crowd behind, behind me, and I wish I could turn around and yell at them to shut it. What does Leif think he's doing? He had awoken frightened and confused, demanding an immediate audience with your father. Before things could go any further, Lord Leuven collapsed and fell into a bit of an unconscious state, though I assured your father that I was just letting him rest. Your father even told me himself that it might have been the might have been brought on from a story he told Lord Leuven the day before. He even admitted to me that he regretted being so open about something knowing that it troubled Lord Leuven. Actually, he might just be saving my ass. Still, I so badly want to tell them. And yet, he wasn't open. 
In fact, Father never was too detailed when it came to talking about Mother. And yet, Leuven here knew many details. This is definitely going downhill. I want to tell everyone about Tigran what's been happening to me. But I hold myself back. I just have to trust that Tigran is handling things wherever he is. Although things aren't looking too good, and the more time that passes, the more I yearn for a sign from him. It is a bit amusing that Lord Leuven was so interested in Lena's death. The vixen cuts in, taking in a very small, talking in a very small voice. I was very close with her, and even I'm not privy to most of what happened. In fact, Rainer rarely spoke of such things, and when he did, it wasn't much. I fail to see how this has anything to do with what I've been accused of. Quiet! I'm afraid you don't get to decide what's relevant. Remember, speak only when spoken to. I mentally berate myself for not holding my tongue. Still, this is a mock trial if I've ever seen one. Thank you, Leaf, for being so cooperative. I now wish to hear from Minister Elizabeth. Leaf walks back up the steps to the side of Adrius' throne and Liz takes his place. You may begin, Minister. At first, she doesn't say anything. She most likely, she's most likely thinking what to say and how to say it, which I honestly appreciate knowing that my life is possibly at stake. Before the throne room can become completely silent, she speaks up. Lord Leuven and I did not have the best first impression. I actually was introduced to them during the incident that Leaf described. It was not a problem at all, really, as I try to be tolerant of things like that. I can't say I've gotten to know them too well. That would be a lie, but... The interactions I've had with them have been for the most part normal. I even had time to chat with, with them during the Solstice Ball. But then, being from Aaron like myself, idle chat came easily. I can't say much about what happened after that. I watched them dance with Sir Reed, and then they left. Even outside of this trial, I keep hearing about this dance. But why is it so important? There's a pause in the conversation, but Liz answers for after a few moments of contemplation. Lord Leuven and Lyle danced together, shortly before leaving the party. Certain people have been spreading gossip, but that's none of my concern. As far as I know, it was a dance, nothing more. Interesting. I did not attend, but I have heard the gossip as well. Adrius looks down at me, sneering. Thank you for clearing that up. I needed a good source. I'm aware that most of the people in this courtroom are present during the Solstice Ball. Lady Oswell. Lady Owl stands from her seat, her winged hands resting at the center of her waist. Yes, Your Majesty. Look at y'all. Man, I'm just on the edge of my seat right now. Jesus. Your brother speaks so highly of your good memory. I feel like everyone could use a nice refresher. Don't like where this is going. Not one bit. I have a very strong feeling that he's about to use another an, another out-of-pocket instance to smear my image. And all I can do is sit here and take it. What was it that Lord Leuven said before leaving the ballroom? I've been hearing so much about this little outburst lately. If my memory is as good as you say it is, I remember him saying something along the lines of, to all of you shams who smile at me through your teeth, only to have your good opinion crushed by something so trivial, enjoy yourselves. God, I really did say that. Her memory is impeccable. She doesn't even have a way to cheat like I do. This was said after the night had turned sour by their display. Her brother butts in, but Adrius holds up his hand, silencing the two of them. I thank you for refreshing our memories. I think it was warranted. Adrius turns to look at her, and she looks at him too. At first, I'm afraid something might happen, but Adrius just quietly responds. Thank you, Minister. I now call forward Lord Kadage. Liz walks back to the right side of the throne, and I look over to see Lord Kadage rise from his chair. He saunters up the steps, stopping where Liz was just standing. Would you have me do the same as the previous two? Yes. Very well. He turns around and shoots a glance my way. I get a feeling from him, I get a feeling from him that I'm not too ecstatic about. Hopefully that is, this isn't too bad. I'll be short and sweet about it. My exchanges with Lord Leuven have been very pleasant, yes indeed. I believe that we both share a similar goal. The cooperation of the Three Kingdoms. I'm sorry, before you continue, I have to ask. I'm sure this is on everyone's mind, but... Why were they able to pick up your scent in my father's room? It's quite simple, really. King Rainer wanted to meet with me, same as he did Lord Leuven. He had informed me the both of us... He had informed the both of us of these meetings during the party, if I remember correctly. What was this meeting about? He only meant to officially appoint me Minister of Foreign Relations, nothing more. We actually left the dance together, as he was very eager to break the news. The guards followed us to the entrance and stood outside. Rainer had no issue climbing the steps, even considering how tipsy he was. The meeting was quite short, as we mainly just needed a quiet place to discuss things. After that, I left. 
Now I'm wondering if I was going to be appointed as something more than a financial advisor. I'm not able to gauge whether Lord Leuven committed this crime or not. My impression of them is that they're a good person. If that is all... King Adrius! Wow, Wow turns around from his position among the guards, taking off his helmet and facing Adrius. Yes, Sir Reed. I wish to bring a crucial piece of evidence to everyone's attention. Adrius raises an eyebrow and everyone else in the room also seems gripped with curiosity. If it will help this case, then I see no reason why you shouldn't. Lau walks over to the table with evidence and with the evidence and carefully picks up the dagger that, kill that, the that the killer used. When he returns, he holds it out to Kadaj. Seeing the dagger makes my insides turn a bit. Kadaj is looking at Lau, confused about what's going on. I also don't really understand why Lau would bring up the dagger now all of a sudden. The entire room is filled with hushed whispers, and through it all, I spot Adrius staring at me. He's probably trying to see what reaction I have to the blade. Lord Kadaj, could you tell me if there are any qualities you notice about this dagger? Anything you might be able to point out? Kadaj gently takes the dagger from him, holding up holding up to his gaze by the pommel and studying it for a moment. Wow doesn't take his eyes off of Kadaj for a second while he does this. It is a simple dagger. Most commonly used with thrusting weapons, but this one is interesting in the design of the blade. Almost like a Chris. So you're familiar with daggers like this? Yes, I have daggers similar to it. I do not know why you ask this. He hands the dagger back to Lyle, holding it by the blade. It has already been determined by our castle blacksmith that this dagger is ordinary and can be purchased in Aaron or Lyre, correct? Liz speaks up from the side of Adrius' throne. Oh, it's... Okay. Throne. Yes, that was determined some time ago. Without a second opinion. I recently consulted a good friend of mine, a blacksmith with experience trading with all the kingdoms. Eden of Grimrock. Look to my left and see Lord Grimdale stir in his seat. You took vital evidence to one of the village blacksmiths. Yes, it's one of the reasons Bjorn attacked me, as unwarranted as it was. I didn't hear of you getting permission to do such a thing. No, I did not. I accept full responsibility for my actions and any punishment that follows. Lyle did all of that? He's really sticking his neck out for me. Alright, y'all, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right here, because I'm gonna keep y'all on the edge of your seats. Hey, I'm on the edge of my fucking seat right now as well. But anyway, y'all, thanks so much for watching. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, leave a super thanks, or tip if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.